Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date's April 11th, 2019, and what a wonderful day today. That scanner was hitting them off. I'm going to hand this right over to Miss Vegas. Okay, well, good afternoon, everybody. Hope you had a good trading day, because I know we did. Um, so we're going to talk about PHUN, CZR, MARA, LIFT, and EDAP. And let's get started. So PHUN, which is called Funware, um, PH though, not F-U-N, um, got a award for a patent mobile device localization. And, uh, you know, this uh, mobile device is based on signal strength indicators. And this is a patent that adds to their intellectual property portfolio, apparently comprised of 16 awarded patents and they actually still have six patents still pending. So they're very excited to have solved a complex one-to-one -one engagement problem for sub one second indoor interactions. And they said that um, they have a decade of commitment. They're best in class for location results on mobile and they intend to keep uh, doing machine learning algorithms and looking to set the industry standards worldwide. Now, this company was founded back in 2009, and they look to develop cloud platform for mobile that enables efficient, cost-effective management for branded apps across multiple platforms. So I'm going to turn it over to Jim to talk about this chart because there's just so much room on this chart um, that I can see that this can go to the double digits. So, Jim, I'm going to turn it right over to you, and let's hear about this chart. All right, now, after hours, we're getting into a, it looks like it wants to work on a double top. We had a 980 high today. This is a daily chart, and this is a beautiful chart today. And um, I want to, first, I want to bring it, first, I want to bring it to a one year and show you that I thought this had a real hard sell off back here. Right, I think it was right back in. right back in here we were had a high of like 40 bucks and she's ran all the way down and dipped all the way down in a one-year chart so I'm gonna pull up the 20 day and that's where I got a few of these resistances at and we had a real hard off sell off right here from this $17 level all the way down to I would almost call three black crows to a 539 low and I thought that was quite interesting and I also found out that the float on it's about 23.5 million. So I'm going to bring this up to the 20 day again. There we go. And you can see how high she was. She was up here at 72.76 20 days ago. And now we're down here at a low of about $5. And the thing just ran today. I mean, it just kept going up and up and up. So let's turn it up to the, let's make it the five day. You see we had kind of a steady trend line here where she kind of balanced out and created a double bottom here right around the $5 area. And then today she went ahead and broke out. I'm going to bring it up to the one minute and show you how we traded it. Also I have another chart on here I want to show you. If I can find it, well I ain't going to worry about it right now. But she ran right out of the gate this morning. She started taking off when we noticed it on the scanner, and then we had a big breakout up here at 743. And then she pulled back and hit a double bottom right here, right around 587. And she ran up on that 20 day almost all day long until she finally gave up right here, where she created another bo double bottom. And you can see what I'm talking about. We hit that low around 569. We called it in the room, got in on the first bounce, and it bounced on up, had a double top, it couldn't hold it. And then she fell back down again and hit that same support level right here at the 769 area. Along with that, she ran into the 100 SMA on a daily one minute. Then she tried to go up for a triple top breakout. She did break up, break out of it, and hit a high of around 927. So here we are after hours right now. Actually, we broke that high. And I'm going to pull that up, show you the after hours. And we created another double top right here at 980, or we're just on the one minute candles. And then she kind of pulled back and hit that 50 and bounced on up. So here we are at right now at around 940. I'd keep this thing on watch. It definitely had the news and this thing. We we think it could run up above 10 
and break that $10 level. And I'm going to pull up one more chart here, and we're going to show a few resistances where I think it can go. And I'm going to pull it up on the 5. The next resistance is going to be right here around 10.34. I'm going to pull up the 20 day and then after that 1034 we've got other places we could hit. We could hit this area right in here which is about 1228 and then another one right here looks to me oh beautiful spot right there around 1453. So I'd consider this almost a swing trade. We did play the pullbacks on it today and this is PHUN and let me put, give you one more pullback support on it. Didn't mention that so I think if it did pull back any at all, you have a couple support levels here to hit. It would be the 8.53, the 8.02, or the 7.69 will be solid. Or you can run them off the moving averages that you prefer. And this is PHUN, and the next one we're going to talk about is Caesars, which had good news. Or let Miss Vegas go on with it here. Well, you know, the thing is, this is rumors, right? Yep. So, you know, Caesars Entertainment... Uh, the stock did move more than 3%. There is news that the company might be putting itself up for sale. And the company plans to announce the sales process in the coming days after, first of all, the board members have to get together. And it has to be approved by the board. And do not forget, Carl Icahn, who is the activist investor, is on the board. Okay? So um, the stock, you know, uh, has had some challenges. Uh, it is looking at, you know, as a moderate buy, and uh, we will see. I mean, the stock is influenced um, by many factors, and we'll have to see what actually happens with Caesars Entertainment. However, you know, as a result, uh, the stock is moving and has had some activity. So I want to hear about the chart because I'm looking to see some action. All right. So here's the Caesars chart, and that's the VWAP chart, so we'll pull this one up here. This has got my moving averages on it. We'll look at the yearly first, see what the year tells us. We had a bumpy ride down here to 584 low, back where everything else sold off. And ever since then, I mean, that would have been a heck of a bargain for Caesars. It's up, it, it doubled. It almost went up 100% from that two-month period, from 584 to a high up to the 20, up to the 200 moving average of 984. Then once it hit that 200-day moving average, it went ahead and pulled back and run into the 50. Then we had, you know, a little bitty golden cross off the 50 and off the 20, where it kind of looped around like a like a roller coaster. And then here, since we alerted it out last, right around the 810 area, she's bounced up to a high of today of around 940, 946. Pull up the 20-day. We'll get another look at it down here from eight bucks when we mentioned it down here at the 810 level 20 days ago she's done nothing but kind of go up and down and create an upward hill climb so the resistance we got to break that's coming out is going to be that ten dollars but first we got to break this 960 then our second resistance is going to be right around here around this 1051 area now this stock can pull back a little bit and that would support would be right around this 931 would be your your first low support and if that didn't hold, it would come to the red line of 912. So let me pull this up on a daily, one minute. You can see the 912 support. We did break out of that um, pre-market. It ran all the way up to the 960 and then pulled back. Broke out of the gate this morning, right about 915, pretty close to that 912. Run up and hit that resistance level right here at 951. And she's pulled back and run up into the moving averages where they squeezed up. And so we've got different supports on this stock. We've got a 912 support. We don't want it to go any lower than that. So if the, um, I'd say the second support is going to be around the 920, 931 area. And we hit that right after hours, that 931, with a pivot point right around this 937. And then you got your three resistances. And we got to break that 960 and bring it up to 10. But this stock, I've heard this rumor for a while now. And there's another big, was it Carl Icahn involved in this stock too, I think? Yeah. Yeah, Caesar. So, you know, he's got his influence on this and he is an, act, an activist, trader, and he will get the buttons pushed. So we've got a support level at 912 to 920 to 31 to 37 with the three resistances up here at 946. 
951 and we're going to try to hit that double top at 960 and break it up to 10 and that'll be czr and the next one yeah, and, also, and also just to mention that yeah. um sees the uh el dorado resorts and billionaire tillman uh for tita are both actively considering a bid for caesar's entertainment so uh, that is also what the rumor is that these two billionaires, uh, Tillman and Fertitta, are potentially might be interested in the Caesars uh, Resort. Again, it has to go back to the board, and uh, both prospective buyers are actually currently performing due diligence. Oh boy. So I guess we'll find out what the <laughs> what happens uh, with C with Caesars Entertainment. I mean, both of them too, by the way. Um, uh, El Dorado Resorts and Tillman Fertitta. He's the owner of the Golden Nuggets Casino, and he also owns the Houston Rockets basketball team. And so uh, we'll have to see what's you know what comes out of it. And Carl Icahn, for those of you that follow him, he increased his stake in Caesars and now owns more than twenty eight percent of uh, the company. So um, we'll have to see what what happens there. That's and he also huge. added new three new directors to the board. And those directors are up to speed and reviewing the strategy and the company's prospects is what also I was reading earlier. And one of the analysts uh, did mention a price cut. <laughs> but, you know, we don't always listen to all the analysts all the time. So let's see what happens with Caesars. Um, and we'll hear what the what we'll see what happens, I guess, when the deal is made, if there is a deal. Right. Yeah. OK. So on to Mara. So Mara, as you guys know, uh, had a reversed split that took effect on April the 8th. They did a four to one split and the float went from 25.5 million down to 6.3 million shares. So the floats become smaller. Um, the other thing too is that, you know, Mara as a company you know, they're involved in the digital asset technology. So they mine cryptocurrency and they also have a focus on blockchain and the generation of digital assets. They also have a mining facility in Canada, in Quebec. And so that's interesting. Um, but the stock is holding up at the 200 day level. So um, I think, you know, the stock could be under some accumulation, Jim. So let's talk about that chart because I've been noticing volume and we saw Mara had a nice little run. And it's also pulled back. Um, so let's maybe look at that and keep it on watch for some of us that are interested on Mara. Okay. Well, this is the Mara chart right here. And I learned something new today I want to share with everybody. Is That's called the Daily SMA. And that's this green line right here. So that's going to be something I'm going to be adding to some of my artillery when I'm moving down the road. I'm going to be watching this thing because I did play that um, PHUN off of it today. It did... And I'm going to just show you something real fast on this before we get into this other thing here. Called this double bottom right here, where two of my low supports was. But after I figured out this daily this daily SMA, it run right into both of them low supports. So I thought that was quite 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 interesting. Let's go to Mara. Sorry to throw you off there, but I love learning stuff new. So now we've got Mary here. We're going to pull up the yearly chart, and it's not going to really tell us much. In fact, I'm going to change this chart and move it to the other one. And that's right there. We'll go ahead and pull this up to the yearly. I can read it a little bit better. I've played this stock a lot. Every one of these lines on here, one's red, that goes back to 2017. I got 2018 on here and also got the 2019 trend lines. So we're breaking up them new highs. We're going to pull up the 20 day. We did have a 186 down here and she's bounced up. She's kind of moved up and she hit a high resistance just the other day, yesterday, at 397 with another resistance right here at the 388 level. Then we had a resistance today at 341. It did pull back today. And we got another one right there at 353. And I'm going to draw another trend line right there at 372. So I'm thinking this stock kind of hit that top right here that at that 341 and kind of settled and pulled back in that channel. Created a little channel here from 314 to 341. I've got a low support 
right here right around 303 and then another one here at 281 so I'm gonna pull up the daily one minute I'm gonna get rid of some of this here stuff here so we can get a bigger chart and these are gonna be the low supports gonna be right down here at 260 in the red line the right around the second supports gonna be at 281 with the no lower support here right around 303 so if it dips down to that 303 we should get a bounce off of it if not she can continue on up and I think she'll start creating a channel because we just had the split and it should consolidate pretty well it is a low float stock so it has an interest of low float traders to get involved in it and my moving average did, did kind of squeeze up together which is good so we're going to see this and expand to see that 20 day start to rise up and let's see this stock break the resistance that we had today of 347. And then we can go ahead and continue on up to the other three resistances that I have at 353, 372 and right here at 388 with a high of 397. And that's where I'm going to put this last one. So this is Mara pullback support no lower than 260. Then if you like you can pause this video and and copy and paste these charts down and use them as your own personal reference and the next one we're going to talk about is an IPO that just came out and it's called Lyft well Lyft certainly needs um you know the stock when it first came out everyone's so excited and people were jumping in and buying it I mean we were like we're not touching this stock especially the first day of the IPO because we've seen how some of these IPOs don't always do that well and it was we kind of thought it was also overpriced knowing that the company had a lot of debts and that was one of the main reasons why we cautioned people uh, you know it's up to them what to do at the end of the day it's their account their money but we just gave our opinion and said you know we don't really suggest anyone really buy this right now They've had so much debts in the past and, um, you know, we don't really think the company's in really good shape, but, you know, remains to be seen. Let's see how it does at the opening. And you know what? This stock um, is pulling back again. I think the bottom that I feel was kind of the $60 mark. And, you know, Jim, you can talk about that because yep. I know you were thinking maybe a little bit lower, but I kind of thought $60 is kind of the bottom. And it kind of did that today. And uh, then went up to about 62.30. And then it looks like it's kind of pulled back again to around that zone. So let's hear about Lyft because many people are keeping their eyes on it. But I don't know. I don't think too many people are excited at this time. And uh, let's hear about your thoughts on the chart. Yeah, I think Miss Vegas might be pretty close to right around that $60 level. I had a $50 target on it. Just a, a, a mental mental idea that where I think it should have been placed at I think they overpriced the IP, IPO personally because they're a non-profit organization so far they're not making any money so let's pull up what period we do have in this trade and I think it's been about what 20 days how long has it been we'll go here yeah it's been about 20 days we had a high of 8860 and then she just sold off for two straight days, kind of bounced up a little bit, found a little bit of resistance right here at 74.75, then pulled back, kind of created another little support resistance level here at 71.18. Then we've had that sell off for about three days, and it went down to 59.75 with that 59.75 low. And I have a 59.77, which I could probably raise up a little bit to 59.95. So that's where I'm going to put my little trend line right there, 59.95. And I want to take that 59. If I can take this off here, we'll find out. Bingo, did it. Well, I'm good. But Miss Vegas is right. We did have a double top today here at 62.21. And she has kind of had a double bottom here right around the 60 dollars 40 level. So let's bring this up to one day, one minute. You can see the double top we had, kind of like a, a, looks like a big M almost. And then she's had the double bottom here right around the 6044 level. So I do believe that it can consolidate now and some of the fat cats will start to get back in this trade and, <clears throat> and bring it on up. Excuse me for a second, I'm going to take a drink of water. 
and I, <clears throat> I do see a little resistance level right here right around the 6327 so let's see if we can bounce this back up tomorrow start getting some momentum out of it create a channel between the 60 dollar level and the 6430 level if we can start creating a channel here for the this week and the rest of next week I think some of the fat cats will start getting in here and start pushing it a little bit more. In fact, they're probably down on it right now, and they're thinking about when am I going to buy some more shares for this stock. LYFT, and I like the company, but I don't like how they priced it out. And the next one's going to be EDAP. Okay, well, we're back to EDAP. I mean, for those of you that listen, especially, like, I, we really try to help uh, people that can't trade full-time or people that find day trading really stressful. And this was a really good pick. We gave this one as a swing trade idea, specifically on April 2nd. And at the time, the stock was $4.19. And we talked about it that night. And then the next, and the resistance we gave was $4.39. Look where this is today. This is great. It's at $5.30. Uh, it's got a new 52 week high and you know, this is the company that has the um, They're into you know, they're in Houston. They have all kinds of products um, They do all kinds of um, Urinary stones prostate cancer. They have uh, all kinds of products and scans uh, For radiology so you can take a look and see what they do uh, if you want to check out their um, website, but they have a really amazing ultrasound uh, technology and it really gives a very in-depth pictures of uh, what they need when people get an ultrasound done so this is amazing um, it's very non-evasive and uh, very good uh, product and obviously in demand and we did talk about how medical technology is going to be you know pretty popular uh, I think for 2019 and, uh, you know, EDAP has a big office in Paris, France. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is a French company, French subsidiary. And they're also in the UK. They're in Spain. They're in Russia. They're in Italy. So they have a lot of locations here. And they're in the Middle East as well, Australia, Asia. Anyway, so the chart is extremely beautiful. And uh, I think we might even see a continuation here, Jim, on EDAP. Oh, this is a beautiful 10-day chart. And I'm looking at a 20-day right now. So let's pull up the yearly. We always start out with the yearly. We had a yearly bottom here at 135. 135 back in December, the end of December, when everything sold off. This would have been another great play to jump in. You could have had you at least in two months, you could have had you 100%. Bring it up to 100% to where it closed at today at 542. We did call this out, and it has run up a dollar since our last mention of this trade. And we had a huge gap right in here from that 4317 all the way up to 350 where this breakout started. So now we're going to pull up the 20 day. We're going to look at it real fast. Nothing but an uphill climb on this trade. We did hit a 52 week high. If I Let me look at that again. Yeah, 52 week high. Let's pull up a three year. See what it says. Three year high. We had to break this here, right here, that 424 to even get past that. So that's a three year high. Let's bring it up to one day, three minute. I'm going to draw a couple more trend lines in here for supports and resistances. Kind of find where I can match up some of these candles here. I'm going to put it right about here. I think that's a good spot. And then I'm going to put another one right here, 523. So we got a resistance, we got a break right here at 542. Then I see another one right here. I'm going to slap that in there. So like I said, this has had a very nice run. I'm going to pull this 20 day up one more time. And I think low support on this stock should be no lower than 475. It should hold that well with your first support right here around 504. And we got to break that resistance up here at 542. And we're going to take a look at it after hours and see where she's hanging out. She did just pull back just a little bit. She closed at 531, and we're right now. It looks like we're right around around 530. So we did. We, we're doing well on this trade right now. It's e D A P resistance level on that 52-week high is 542, and that's what we got to break. 
pullback support no lower than this 516 area or 504. And 504 is going to be a strong buy on this trade. I'm telling you that right now. And then I'm going to put five bucks down here just to have fun with it. And this is EDAP. Keep it on your watch list. We recommended it and it's up a dollar already in a week. Go ahead, Miss Vegas. Okay, so I do want to mention for those of you in the Toronto area, there is going to be a cannabis capital conference April 17 and 18. It is not free. You do have to pay. It is going to be at the Fairmont Royal York Hotel. And this is actually hosted by Benzinga. And it is uh, the third one that they've been doing, third year that they're doing it. Basically brings together a whole bunch of cannabis entrepreneurs and investors in North America and uh, what they're going to be doing on the first day of the conference, they're going to have a whole bunch of cannabis executives and service providers. They're going to talk about the post-legalization in Canada. They're going to talk about emerging markets. They're going to have fireside chats. They're going to have over 200 executives attend. And there will also be some exclusive networking opportunities during and after the show. Uh, then on the second day, which is the Thursday, they're going to have um, a lot of speed networking opportunities with investor presentations and meeting rooms. They're going to have presentations about influencers in the cannabis sector and policymakers and trailblazers. So the audience usually for this kind of an event is about over 750 people. About 25% are institutional investors, 20% is about retail. 40% are actually publicly traded cannabis companies. 10% are private cannabis companies and the rest is usually some media people or, you know, um, people that are just interested, but um, that's interesting. So this is a venue uh, at the hotel in Toronto at the Fairmont, a gorgeous hotel. Love that place. Um, and uh, it's right downtown. So if you're interested and you're into the cannabis venue and you're interested, you can definitely check it out uh, if you're going to be in the city um if not then that's fine i'm sure we'll hear more about this as the days go by and uh, they have quite a lot of good speakers at the venue that are going to be speaking and i noticed that the vp of investor relations from aurora cannabis is going to be there so he'll be uh probably speaking there and uh we'll see who else there the big list so if you want to check it out you can check the website benzingacannabisconference.com for all the details and that's it. So if anybody has anything else, please comment in our video. Please like, please follow, please share. And again, welcome to come into our chat. We'd love to have you. And on that note, have a great night. All right. And also, you can link here to our Twitter page. Subscribe to it. Follow us there. We also have another link to our Facebook page. If you have a Facebook account, please follow us there. And here's our Facebook page right here. But we do appreciate it, and we love stocks. This is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim, April the 11th, 2019.